So this is the patient we're going to operate today, a 54-year-old lady uh, with chronic anterior knee pain, severe patellar, patellar osteoarthritis, well-preserved cartilage on the femoral condyles and the tibial plateau, menisci and uh, ACL in good condition, but a fully worn cartilage on the patella. And uh, here on the skyline view, uh, some lateralized tracking also, as you can see, as you can see, but uh, no cartilage anymore on, on the kneecap. So uh, clear indication for patellofemoral replacement. Um, the standing radiographs, AP and lateral, and uh, um, the images uh, from the virtual planning generated by the robot and the artificial intelligence in the software. Uh, it looks already quite good. We can uh, still do some final adjustments once we are inside the knee, but uh, so far the planning that the robot has made looks uh, actually quite well. Uh, we seem to have a good transition zone. Okay, uh, in the OR now, this is our typical setup uh, with the robot uh, being installed, patient being draped, uh, tourniquet applied, the leg is uh, exsanguinated. Um, standard longitudinal incision, slightly medial to the midline. Dissection uh, deep to the subcutaneous layer and uh, muscle sparing mid vastus opening of the knee. Drilling uh, for insertion of the marker pins. And attachment of the reference frames so the robot can see where the knee and where the leg in space is. So we make connection with the robot and uh, with the eyes of the robot, which is the camera system, which connects with the reflective markers onto the pins. A mapping of the cartilage surface so that the robot can make the connection between the virtual and the real articular surface and he knows precisely where it has to be. So double checking here on the planning, seems quite good, we have a nice transition zone, um, yeah, okay, let's go for, for this and, and ride in the robot. Some small adjustments still, okay, here the robot is in. So the robot has a, has a burr connected to its end piece and uh, with the burr uh, the robot will start to prepare the bed now. It's a six degree freedom uh, uh, robot system so uh, basically you still have control as a surgeon but uh, the robot will uh, make sure you stay precisely within the boundaries that are, that are required. And as you see sometimes the robot is going very fast when the bone is soft. Sometimes it slows down when the, when the bone is harder. But uh, the good thing is it will be extremely precise. The precision is uh, less than 0.5 millimeter. That's the precision or an accuracy that you can never achieve uh, with manual instruments and with, uh, with manual burring. So obviously there's some debris being generated that uh, will wash away in, in a moment. We're almost there. Okay, that looks excellent. So now we have the bed being prepared for, for a trochlear implant. Um, and, and actually this is the most important step during the procedure because uh, the transition between, between the native knee and, and the prosthetic component needs to, be, needs, needs to be perfect. And that's why the help from, from the robot is, is so important and so crucial for us. So the fixation holes have been drilled also by the robot in the meantime. So let's have the trial implant uh, being inserted. The trial implant is a little bit smaller than the final implant. So there, are, there will still be some margin between the implant and the cartilage with this trial implant, but that will be, that'll, that'll have disappeared once we insert the final component. Good 
And actually, yeah, this looks excellent. We have a smooth transition. So let's concentrate on the patella now. Um, first, remove some of the uh, inflamed synovium surrounding the patella. Um, you see fully worn cartilage there. Um, we're measuring the thickness um, before and after the cut. So standard, standard uh, pneumatic saw cut here. Um, and the, the target is to reduce or to restore the exact thickness of the pre-arthritic condition of this, of this kneecap. Usually that means around 22 millimeters thickness for a female patient, around 24 on average for a male patient, depending obviously on the, on the morphotype and the size of the patient. So this is what we want to achieve, restore uh, exactly the pre-arthritic state uh, with the pre-arthritic geometry of the, of the articulating surface. In the, in the right thickness. Okay, um, preparing for the fixation lugs for the patellar component. So this needs to be uh, very exact. So this is for size 32. Insertion, insertion of, the, of the fixation clamp for the patella. And once we are perfectly satisfied with the position, we can drill the lug holes. Okay, that looks very good. Right, holes in place now. Inserting the trial patellar component. And then do our first check on the gliding and the stability of the patella. Testing this in uh, full flexion, going to extension. That looks good. Okay, so far so good. So uh, let's clean up uh, and, and uh, make sure we have a dry uh, area now for cement fixation of the component. So uh, I'll we'll ask this nurse to, uh, to start preparing the cementation. Okay, so here we are, finger packing the cement. <coughs> and gently tapping the final component in place. Until we are perfectly flush. Removal of the uh, excess cement. And it's a really a nice, a nice fit and a nice transition zone between the prosthetic component and the cartilage. That's really what we want. Okay, we're finally inserting the patella component. Make sure we have a dry bone bed there. Okay, cement for the patella. And there is the polyethylene component. And the pressurization clamp to make sure that we have a a good uh, or perfect interdigitation of the cement layer into the patellar bone. And also here, removal of the uh, excess cement. So we have no uh, extrusion there being left in situ. OK. 
Okay, we will keep this position uh, until the cement is, uh, is hardened. Uh, copious lavage to remove uh, any uh, remnant debris and to clean up the joint and let the cement get uh, hardened until it's perfectly solid. Usually that takes about 15 minutes. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, this is a perfect restoration of the native, the pre-arthritic curve of the trochlea, which is a very important for a, for a nice pain-free and full uh, um, articular movement of the patella once, once the, the muscle and the patella is reduced. Okay, do the final check now, yeah. and this should be really smooth. Uh, yeah. This is being tested without the quadriceps expansion being closed, yeah. so it's still open. Yeah. That's fine, gives you already a good idea yeah. on the tracking. And now we'll do a temporary closure with the, with the towel clip onto the supramedial corner of the quadriceps, and do a final assessment of the, of the tracking. So this should really go smooth and exactly as we want it. Looks good. Maybe a little bit of residual lateral tilting, which uh, uh, I explained in the beginning was expected. So we're going to do a very small uh, and very, very well titrated uh, lateral retinacular release. This is really fine tuning. So we're uh, releasing some of the superficial fibers of the vastus lateralis insertion. Very progressive, very gentle staying out of the vessels that you see there, the vessels of the lateral uh, superior uh, geniculate. And you see how this patella yeah. finds its way into its perfect location until all tension has been relieved. About there, see nicely yeah. the, the opening of a few millimeters. Extra synovial, so the synovium stays intact. All right, and now this patella is lying perfect. Okay. Um, that's basically the most important part of the procedure. We're releasing the tourniquet now, so uh, the uh, vascularization to the leg and the knee is, is restored. Hemostasis with electrocautery and the closing of the joint. Actually, the closure is, uh, we believe, is a very important step. Uh, we pay a lot of attention to it because uh, it equally contributes to the success of the procedure, that you have a good solid closure and, and, and anatomic closure um, so precisely as it was before We're using separate uh, vicral two stitch stitches um, for closing in the quadriceps expansion the mpfl and the medial retinaculum and the aim is really to get a watertight closure so we'll You'll see it in a moment, we'll do that in double layers uh, or in double runs. So first separate stitches and then a uh, running uh, stitch with a barbed wire over that so it's completely watertight. And when you do that, there's absolutely no leakage uh, and you reduce the risk for infections of, to virtually zero. So this is the running stitch with a stratafix uh, one, so it's a barbed wire, it's a running stitch, and it really provides uh, a leakage free closure of the joint. Again, very important uh, towards prevention of wound leakage and infection.
Then finally, a closure of the subcutaneous layer with a vicryl O or vicryl 1, depending on the thickness of the subcutaneous layer. Separate stitches. An intradermal uh, resorbable stitch, straight needle. We prefer straight needle uh, because it gives the most beautiful scar, we believe. Um, the voice, the curling effect that you have with the curl needle. Younger surgeons typically don't like to use a straight needle because they're not used to it. But uh, when you have my age uh, or our age, um, it's actually uh, the way how we were trained. And uh, like I said, very nice, very nice uh, linear scar. Which is highly appreciated, appreciated by many patients. And then finally, covering uh, with uh, with our mesh uh, dressing and uh, a tissue adhesive, which is again, it's a highly effective barrier against uh, um, leakage and against uh, microbial microbial uh, penetration. So highly efficient towards wound leakage and uh, and the potential infection. And then finally, a compressive bandage and uh, finishing of the case.